If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Nikola Tesla. Welcome to The Frequency Shifter Show. I'm your host, Corinne Summers, founder of Artisan Pharmacy. In this show, we explore ways to raise the frequency of ourselves, one another, and our planet. We're digging deep into all things metaphysical, from what is frequency, to the power of sound, the Schumann resonance, our DNA, Reiki, the energy of water, and beyond. All to shift our minds and bodies back into alignment with richer states of connection, elevated awareness, and maximum human potential. And we're bringing on the global experts and thought leaders to share their wisdom as they let us pick their brains around all these juicy, mysterious topics. First of all, I don't know who Ricky is and metaphysical, Schumann's Renaissance. What are you, I don't even know. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. I need us to take a step back and calm down. What are we even talking about here? (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to mention, I have a co-host. The universe insisted, what can I say? This is Alex Terranova, founder of Dream Mason. He's sort of a newbie to some of this frequency stuff, and he's going to help keep everything balanced, grounded, and relatable. So this show isn't just for the experts to nerd out on all things metaphysical, but it's an open welcome space for everyone to explore the mysteries of the universe and raise our frequencies together. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Frequency Shifter Show, season three, a huge milestone. I am so excited to be here. This season is absolutely magical and full of really incredible and inspiring humans that are changing the world and changing the frequency. Uh, I'm Corinne Summers, and I'm your host. Unfortunately, Alex Terranova is back with me again as my (laughs) co-host. Just kidding, Alex. You know you're one of my favorite humans. What have you been up to? What's up? I can't believe we are doing season three. I am deep in a, either by the time this comes out, a I will be a married man for the first time in my life, or right now I'm deep in a almost wedding portal, which is, man, there's a lot of transformation if you really consciously go into the, if you, play, if you consciously go into a place of creating nuptials. It it unearths some things. Uh, And I've also been super deep in men's work. Had my first retreat recently uh, that I hosted for men, launching some new stuff in this year, 2023 for men. So I'm really excited about that. What about you? What have you been up to? Um, Well, I'm number one, super, super, super excited and cannot wait to be in Mexico at your wedding. Uh, So I will tell people where it is. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Wait, no, wait. No, it's totally fine. Nobody knows. Mexico's huge. No one will find us. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't wait. We're going to be manifesting all the magic for Alex um, and Evan and their beautiful, beautiful uh, relationship. Uh, Super excited to be, oh my gosh, I just can't today. (laughs) Man, keep going. Just keep going. We're going to cut this. There's too much good stuff that you just, we can't redo. So... (laughs) You're super. Okay. So go say it's just beyond the wedding. <laughs> just go beyond back. the wedding. Just go back to I'm super excited. Okay. About the wedding? You said you're excited about the wedding, and then you said I'm super excited about whatever's next. I'm also super excited about the work that I'm doing, which is basically the opposite, working with uh women and uh conscious entrepreneurs. So specifically uh soulpreneurs, as I like to call them, uh, but women who are also working in wellness. Um, and helping others raise their frequency. And so I've been doing these moon meetings, the Cosmic Coven, and it is so much fun because it's basically just a bunch of empowered, powerful women that get together and talk about astrology and what we're working on and how to support each other. And we collaborate. It's where everybody's like building these relationships with each other and supporting one another in more of a real way, like off social media. And to me, that has been the biggest, coolest thing that has been happening. And I'm going to try to continue to uh, um propel because um it's, it's been really exciting and really amazing to see cosmic coaching. cosmic coven i the love cosmic that. coven yeah and then i also have my um my academy for conscious entrepreneurs which is, is launching again and that's my like paid coaching program um but the cosmic coven is free and yeah we're just it's like women supporting women 
all the way and I love it. It's amazing energy. Sounds so. like a perfect intro to introduce our guest. Do you want to first guest of season three? You want to tell people she sounds like she would be someone who would create a cosmic coven. But uh, absolutely. You, you yes. tell people about her? <laughs> Luna Veronica Mystic, who is amazing to follow on Instagram. Um, Luna, uh, you're just an amazing inspiration. She works also with uh, witchy women and uh, who are uh, moving, try to move their energy into higher alignment. Um, I just can't stop screwing this up. <laughs> okay, so just keep going. We can't stop the so pause and just don't. go back a second. Luna specifically uh, loves to work with I'm so bad you let us start this whole one over. Now we have to edit it a million times. There we go. Luna is an astrologer and works with women and witches empowerment. One really fun thing about her is that she's also a circus artist, a fire performer, and a dancer. Um, she is really eclectic and has a unique perspective on astrology. So I really enjoyed uh, digging into these things with her. It's not your standard astrology uh, interview. We go into a lot of really unique and kind of some deeper meanings of astrology. So definitely recommend checking it out. She what is. What you like about it? She is really fun. First of all, she's fun. She's like I don't, down to earth. Isn't the right word because she's like out in space. But she she brings like a lightness and a play and something. I think you could just identify with her. She didn't. I didn't feel like I was talking to an astrologer that was like out there. The concepts are, but her as a person felt like really human and grounded with us. I'm excited. Let's, let's jump into this episode. What's up, Luna? So I'm excited. You're, you're, I think the second astrologer we've had on this show. So, and one was at the very beginning in our first season. So I'm really excited to, to dive back into this. And I'm curious, like to start. How, how do you, how does one even become an astrologist, a psychic, right? You didn't wake up in third grade and go, that's what I am. And it wasn't offered as a, you know, as a college degree. So how did you find yourself here? Uh, yeah, actually they, they, there is an astrology uh, college. If um, <laughs> you can say astrologist or um, yeah, astrologer, but. um made me laugh. There's one <laughs> astrologist. <laughs> Um, there actually is an astrology university. Uh, it's called Kepler College, and I, I didn't know about it at the time. But I think that um, being an astrologer, being a psychic, being whatever you want, honestly, comes from first just deciding that that's what you're going to be. Um, claiming a title is is quite challenging for a lot of people. But I think that once you have gained enough mastery and that you're in, you embody your craft it's just kind of what you become that's just what people see you as regardless of what title you're wanting to be um but you asked me how 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 I started well I mean astrology is essentially the language of the universe so as a young child I was always curious as to why things were the way they were I didn't really understand why people would behave some ways why certain things would happen to other people and why the universe was basically like why I was alive in the first place. And astrology was was the answers for those questions. It was the only thing that again and again made sense for me. And it was the only thing that proved to to give me answers that were consistent. And when I tried to tell people of my findings, the world didn't really agree with me. And people were trying to tell me that my experiences with astrology weren't valid because it wasn't scientifically accurate. And as I, you know, kept studying the people around me and reading books and just not even knowing what I was doing, really, it was a very natural thing. Um, I started realizing that consciousness and the human soul cannot be qualified or um, validated by science. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's kind of that. I think like if you want to be good at anything or you want to become anything, you just have to immerse yourself completely in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was such a beautifully rich way of explaining it i love calling it the language of the universe could you just tell us a little bit more about what that means yeah so when astrology when i say astrology is the language of the universe it's basically that astrology 
reflects what is happening on Earth. So it's not that the planets make things happen to you. They, they don't really get care. Uh, they're kind of just doing their thing. And they're up in the sky. And for some reason, we are able to see them. We have a relationship with them. You know, the moon has a gravitational pull to water. And, you know, they actually have an effect on us. And that it's, it's more that they reflect things on Earth. So the planets in the sky reflect what's happening on Earth as a collective on the planet Earth as well as, you know, yourself, because we are, I know as cheesy as this sounds, we are made up of the cosmos. We are made up of stardust. We are made up of all of that. And so for some reason, I still don't really know why, that the more I look at astrology, the more it works. Um, and it works in the way of understanding who you are in terms of your personality traits, all the way to understanding what you're supposed to do for your soul purpose, who your partner's supposed to be like, what your karma is in relationships, um, how you how you make money, how to make more money, um, your relationship to health, sickness, your greatest wounds, um, you know, your everything is found in the birth chart. So that's the natal chart, which is essentially a snapshot of the moment you were born, of where the planets were in space, um, and that chart was a round circle with all the glyphs. It's you know made into a two D model of the planets in the sky, but I can read that. And so I can read basically someone's soul. And I, I, I wake up every day and I'm, you know, doing readings for random people. And there's, there's some, there's a remembrance there when I, when I speak, you know, people are left crying or they, they don't know what to say because there's, there's an unraveling of the soul that gets remembered and astrology seeks to bring consciousness to the human experience. That's essentially what it is. Um, and so that's just the natal chart, but you know, there could be astrology done for anything. It's, it's crazy how deep astrology can go. You know, there's medical astrology. So you could look at astrology for your health. Uh, there's a mundane astrology, which is looking at astrology of countries and of the world. I recently dove into that and that is blowing my mind. You know, there's a whole bunch of different astrology. You can use astrology for finding lost objects and missing things. Um, so there's just like so many different branches um, that you can use. And it is an esoteric study, but it is the most grounded, nerdy, scientific thing that I've really come across. So yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> it, it like, it makes sense. And then there's this kind of thing I'm playing with in my head is, so you said before, it's not, which I like that you said, it's like the planets don't care what we're doing, right? They're not like manipulating us. And we're not manipulating them, right? So our decisions like don't have all of a sudden plans aren't moving in different places because of what we do. So how does that, when you say it's a mirror, right? If my, how does the planet, how do planets necessarily like reflect my health to me if it's not based on what I'm doing or it's not based on what they're doing? Like, how is there a connection? And we could use that with, you know, even like countries and the state of the world. How, can you explain that reflection? Because that to me feels like, and I, and I believe, and I'm like, I almost have like a blind faith. Like I believe in what you're saying, but there's that part of my brain that's like, but it doesn't really make any sense. Like how does, how is there a connection? Well, what I love about astrology is that it makes sense of the nonsensical and the nonsensical is being alive. Like we don't really, um, act, like whatever's happening right now to me doesn't make sense. The fact that I'm a human being, I'm communicating on a computer and things just seem strange like to exist. So to me that there's that, <laughs> but also um, like we don't really know what's going on basically. Um, so to, to want to make sense of reality is like where astrology is like, well, what if I just told you it worked? So there is that aspect of like, if you don't understand, if you don't believe in astrology, it's because you just haven't done enough research and you just haven't looked at it in your own life. And astrology is actually something that has to be experienced. It cannot be explained. So you have to see astrology show up in the archetypes in your life in people. Otherwise, it will just seem very foreign and far away. It just won't it'll seem more like a concept rather than like, oh, I can see how this dog is behaving as an Aries right now. You know, it's like that is a fully a thing. I've guessed dog signs. I, 
you know, that's, that's just my thing. But, um, in, in regards back to your question is that there's different, a planet, there's different planets that have different associations. And so back thousands of years ago, when we couldn't go out into space, humans wanted answers as to why we were on earth. And we were constantly creating stories and myths as to why, you know, this is what we love. This is what human beings love. And so what happened was basically astrologers, like the history of astrology is that astrologers were astronomers, right? That's what they called themselves. They called themselves astrologers, but they were actually astronomers until 1931 when they bridged the gap between science and spirituality. But anyways, they were called astrologers because we could not go out into space. So everything that we knew about space for a very long time was geocentric. It's from our point of view on Earth. It's from us looking up at the sky. And so what astrologers were doing were tracking the stars and the planets. And then they noticed that some planets were moving and some weren't. And, you know, like, what is that? And there's fixed stars and there's constellations. And, and so they just started tracking the movement of the sky. And the reason that they did that was to actually was for the king. Um, there was, you know, kings in certain lands and they would they would write down auspicious days. OK, if there's an eclipse here, you know, maybe the king's going to die. So they would actually replace the throne with some random guy to make sure that the king was OK. And, you know, so they just started tracking these things. And eventually the planets started having meaning that was associated to their creation. So, for example, Saturn is like a cold and dry planet. So the significations of, ca of Saturn are more like restrictive. They're hard working. They're involved mastery, dedication. And so then it goes to the Saturn is ruled by Capricorn. So then we have, you know, Capricornian um, traits come from Saturn, which is cold and dry and whatever. So essentially... <laughs> It is just a series of stories and um, things that we've associated from tracking what happens when certain planets move in the sky over the beginning of time. And so if you take that further, a lot of times with astrology, you get these generic readings of like, oh, OK, this is happening. And then you're like, well, I don't really feel that for me personally, or oh, I'm going through hell right now. Why is this supposed to be a good time? It's because your birth chart, so what I spoke earlier of, um, you know, when you're born, the planets are in a certain position, and then that's supposed to indicate your life, essentially. That stays as a screenshot, but then the planets in the sky are moving. So when the planets in the sky are moving, it will hit a certain part of your life at a specific time. So if you say, oh, like, um, you know, how does this relate to me and my health? Well, I can very much say that would relate to you and your health if you have Uranus transiting your first house, right? Representing unpredictability and chaos and possibly like injuries in the house of self, in the house of the physical body. So there is like unique transits that would happen only for you. And your birth chart is unique to you for 26,000 years. So nobody's going to have your birth chart except for in 26,000 years, someone will then have your birth chart again. But it is like, yeah, it, it's it's an overall, um, it's a divinatory language, right? You're predicting things. So obviously things are going to be flawed and you can kind of only hit the dartboard rather than the bullseye when you make astrology predictions. But they're pretty accurate if an, uh, if an astrologer is really like takes into the technique and the delineation and knows how to actually read a chart, then it is very predictive in certain events like your question. And I really hope that <laughs> this this uh, answers your question. <laughs> I thought that was great. I feel a little attacked by like the Saturn Capricorn comment, but like, you know, that's fine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You're a Capricorn? I'm a Capricorn, yeah. Well, we can... Like, and I was like dry and cold <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, here, she's just coming right... <laughs> Oh no! Okay, so I'm, I know I know you weren't. He's talking about Saturn. Yeah, yeah no, I'm I, I know. About Saturn's yeah. dry and cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing the thing my partner is a Capricorn, and he has five planets in Capricorn. So you know he he's the most Capricornian, and um, there's definitely this element to Capricorn which is very serious, um, and definitely 
like I say, dry, kind of sarcastic, really on the earth plane. Um, and Capricorn rules work, right? Capricorn rules hard work and uh, dedication and mastery. So, you know, in order to be hardworking and dedicate yourself to something, you, you kind of have to like grit it. It's not like, it's not like Leo who's just like having a good time and is just like, just, you know, having like just being the sun and like, woo, it's like Capricorn's like, what are you doing with your life? You know, how are you getting your shit together? Um, Can so stop talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Actually, we should pull up a chart. That could be really fun. Um, I really resonated with what you said earlier too about um, just that you have to experience astrology for it to make sense. I kind of rejected it, even though I'm a Reiki master, I'm into all of this stuff. I guess in my earlier years of it, I had kind of rejected it at first. And then when I started to study it, I, it just started making so much sense. Every little thing that I learned, it was like all these aha moments, beginning with when you know I didn't really align with being a Virgo, besides that I'm really earthy and like, I love nature. I didn't find myself that aligned to Virgo. But then when I found out, oh, I'm a Taurus moon and a Libra rising and my Chiron is in, you know, whatever. And then I, my Chiron's in Gemini. Um, but when I found out all these like little pieces, it started to make more sense. And every time I would read something, it would be like I was discovering a new piece of myself that was shocking because it's unbelievable how spot on it can be. Um, I'd love to hear you go into a little more like explaining to people a little bit more about what the different, I guess, the main um, planets placements to pay attention to besides the sun sign. So a lot of folks only know their sun sign or maybe the sun, moon and rising, but there's just so much more. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, I guess it depends like why, you know, you're looking at astrology because you can look to astrology for so many different things. And I think like most people start with wanting to understand their sense of self, you know, who am I? What am I here to do? What's my sole purpose? Um, and I do think that really understanding the sun, moon and rising is the most important thing to get started in astrology because your sun is your sole purpose. It's like what you're here to do. And it's like the role you're here to play. It's how you shine. Um, so I'll just do mine as an example, just because, you know, if people are watching the visuals, they can, they can get a sense of my energy. Um, so my son is in Pisces. So that means, um, what I'm here to be is actually spiritual service. So it's not necessarily my personality, like I am Pisces, but more like my role to society shows up as Pisces. And so Pisces rules, empathy, non-judgment, compassion, love, intuition, mysticism. Um, it's the opposite of Virgo, right? Virgo ruling physical service, being grounded in this reality, helping with plants and healing and the body and um, you know, stuff like that. And Pisces is the opposite is that spiritual service. Um, so that's the, the sun or the essence of the soul. And then internally is the moon sign. So your moon is actually your emotional responses to life. It's your relationship to your mother. It's your childhood experiences. It's what you need to feel safe and nurtured. And it's, when something's happening outside of you, it's like, this is what's happening inside your internal reaction. So I have a Leo moon. Um, so what this means <laughs> is I, my mood or my heart is actually seeking external validation. So what I would need to feel safe is people thinking that I'm unique and special. So this was like really... <laughs> like shook my whole life when I read about that because as a little girl I remember having my foot in the air and being like hey mom look at me they look at this like am I amazing am I special like am I talented and I just I didn't know what that was um and I realized that Leo is that really warm is that fun is that joyful placement um that wants to be seen and wants to perform and wants to make people laugh but if that's your moon then that's your inner world of what it actually desires for safety. Um, so, and also what you like to do and it's your, your body. And so anyway, so that's the sun and the moon, which people don't really see that. They don't really see your moon sign. But if you go to my Instagram, you know, you'll see that I'm a circus artist. I eat fire. I'm a model. I, you know, I'm very much like that. Um, Isn't the moon also though, like it's, does, don't some people see it? Isn't the moon also your sensual sexuality? 
that side as well? No. <laughs> no? Um, a lot of books I met have been wrong then. Woo. I've I've never really read that the moon is your sexuality. It, it would more be like what you need to feel safe and nurtured. Um, I associate Mars and Venus with all things to do with sexuality and sensuality. Um, I even have a whole course on Mars and Venus, which is like all love and lust and astrology. But the moon, it's hard to say because my moon is conjunct by Mars. So I do have like, you know, my sexuality is attached to my moon. But the moon separately is more like your sensitivity, your emotions. It's your femininity. Um, it can be your sensuality. But I think you're saying that because you're a Taurus moon. So like, you know, a, a Taurus moon person rules sensuality, right? Um, a Taurus moon person rules touch, smell, taste, the senses, pleasure, luxury, feeling financially secure. Um, all oh, yeah. Of <laughs> all of that. <laughs> so I you're right. I, you maybe I read it on my own moon because it's a book uh, that goes through all the moon signs, like really and like all the witchy ritual things you can do for each of the moons. I love it. But um, I think maybe it was just about mine. So I got that wrong. Um, but emotional I mean, depth, the sensuality, they're kind of connected. <laughs> super, yeah, I, I can see why you asked that question as a Taurus moon for sure. But that's funny. I actually have, um, I was like, I have my own document like that, like a, a moon sign and the rituals. And anyway, um, make it a book. Like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and then so that's the sun and the moon. But then the the vessel that holds the sun and the moon is the rising sign. So if you don't resonate with your sun sign, then your rising sign can usually be the indication of why you don't resonate with that. Um, because the rising sign was the constellation that was rising the moment you were born. And that constellation is the beginning of the first house, which is the house of self. And the house of self in astrology represents your physical body. So it's like what you look like and your personality as well as your vibe. It's like your essence and your energy when you walk into a room and people feel you, they're actually feeling your rising sign. So your rising sign is the body that holds the purpose of the sun and the emotional responses of the moon. So for example, my rising sign, I bet you could even guess it just by looking at me is I'm a Scorpio rising. So when people see me, they think that I'm gothic. I am, you know, one of the first things that Alex said to me was like, oh, you have like a lot of sexy pictures on Instagram. You know, there's this like sensual element to me. There's this penetrative. I'm more intense. I'm actually like darker skinned. I'm covered in tattoos. I literally have a black arm, um, you know, so your rising sign also represents like what you look like. And the more that you actually play on your rising sign, I believe the more success you have in life because your rising sign is how people see you anyways. And it's like what they want more of. So if you embrace and embody all of the elements of your rising sign, then life is a lot more easier. Um, I have so much to say about that, but sometimes there can be planets in the first house, which would indicate struggle in presenting as the self or some wounding or some challenges or um, yeah. So you can all kind of read that when you look at the chart of, as a whole. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're going oh so deep, so good. I love all of this. Um, I'm sorry, Alex. I just have one really quick follow-up question because I will otherwise forget it. Um, I heard recently, I cannot remember from what astrologer online, something about, so like Libra, or I'm sorry, I'm a Libra in my rising sign, but that your rising sign represents who, how people see you in person, but that a different placement of some sort actually represents how you people see you online. And that they're different, how people see you and feel your vibe and your energy in person versus how you show up online in things like social media can be two different things in two different placements. Do you happen to know anything about that? Yeah. I mean, every astrologer has their own interpretation, especially when it comes to business. I feel like this has been a really hot, popular thing right now of astrologers like being like, I'll help you make money and like, you know, with astrology. And like, I, that, yeah, like that is a thing. And, you know, I can help people do that because you can read anything in the birth chart. But ultimately, like your rising sign is you. 
Um, <laughs> so if you want to be perceived differently online, you can be. But I think what she was referring to is like the third house in astrology is the house of social media. So if you have planets in there, you can kind of play that up. Um, and the 10th house is also your public persona and how people see you in career and in like how like the steps to take to get famous and stuff like that. Um, so you can look to those placements. So I'm pretty sure that's what she's referring to. But um, yeah, there could be a lot of like wishy-washy stuff when it comes to like astrology and business. I feel like the the whole rounded perspective of astrology should be like at the basis of the soul and like reading the map of the soul. And once you understand like the soul purpose and how like the actual roadmap steps of how to be in the soul purpose, then everything else just flows. Um, it shouldn't be like, this is what you should do to make money. And this is what you should do to like magnetize more clients. It's like, it's more like there's a whole huge holistic approach to the chart which generally requires healing which generally requires like some awkward things to look at and from there like what I've seen from my clients who work intimate with me with the, intimately with me is that the business just naturally um evolves and and happens so that's kind of what my is coming out of my mouth right now <laughs> this is great from I love that you asked that Karine like from the the place I wanted to go was for people that are listening, you know, online now, it used to be you had to know someone who knew someone. Maybe you walked down the street and saw a shop that's at Psychic or something and you were like, what is that, right? Like, you don't really know. Now online presents two things. One is we get a lot more information about people so we can do like a lot more research and know who we're talking to. But it also creates a lot more of people who just like pop up shop and like, I'm this now. So as, totally. as someone who's, you know, has experience and credibility, someone who's listening to this for the first time, like how do they know where to go? How do they know how, like who to trust? Are there ways that you would recommend? Cause everyone can't work with you, but you know, when they're out in the world looking, how do they know? I was going to say, obviously Luna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. That's when one can work with her. Yeah. Oh, you're sweet. Um, I do have some very accessible and low end, you know, DIY astrology courses that people can check out too. And only, only building and growing. Um, um, but well, what I find really interesting actually is that people will find astrologers or I'm just using astrologers as an example that they resonate with based off where they're at spiritually and mentally. So it's like when I'm like looking at other astrologers work, I'll just like know kind of instantly if their work doesn't resonate with me. Like I don't like their reels or I don't like their language and how they present the content. I don't like, you know, if I feel disempowered or I don't like the way that they navigate it. It's very interesting that I find like some people love certain astrologers and other ones. I'm like, I would that just is so not my my style or that's just like blowing over things or whatever. So in terms of social media, it's the wild, wild west out there. You know, I think it's really up to the person to be discerning of like what feels good. Um, you know, I do post astrology content. So obviously if you want to follow me, you can. Um, but also I highly, highly recommend books. Um, like any, any real astrologer that like writes like an in-depth book What's is like generally great, incredible. What would be like a great book for someone who's like, I'm super interested in this. I like pretty much like have faith and believe it. <laughs> But I yeah. want to like go more in depth. What would be a, a book that they can? Um, I'm putting you on the spot. There's one called yeah. The Only Astrology Book You'll Ever Need. I have that in addition to the moon one. Um, and it's really, I like that one personally because it seems um, to be the only astrology book you would ever need. It covers so much, like a giant Bible. Yeah, yeah no, that book is okay. Um, I do, like it's, it's good. But again, I, for some reason, like, the language for me in that book, like I wasn't really resonating with. Um, astrology is funny because it can instantly become disempowering or instantly become judgmental, like just very quickly. So it is like important to make sure that the language um, like speaks to you. So that book is okay. Um, 
Okay, this is the name of it. Yeah, I think the best book that I recommend to everybody is Astrology, Using the Wisdom of the Stars in Your Everyday Life by Carol Taylor. Um, that book is just really, really good. Um, Astrology and the Authentic Self by Demetra George is really good because Demetra George is like 80 years old and she's like the OG of astrology and she's breaks down like really esoteric and Hellenistic concepts into more modern um, day. So she's really good. Um, Liz Green is another really good astrologer. Um, if you want to go in my route, which is like really dry and more predictive and divinatory, you know, anything by Chris Brennan, his podcast is really good. The astrology podcast or Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune. His book is really, yeah, again, not for the faint heart, but it's good. Um, so yeah, those are those are some books that are are coming to mind. I think we should play a game, uh, Korean, on this podcast where we like bring we like have Lorna look at like other influence like us like influencers yeah. and we're like thumbs up, thumbs down. So like, oh no. <laughs> we're not you gonna just get to sign and see how many she gets right. Like, That's actually totally my thing. That's what I'm known to do is I guess people's like birth chart placements. And I have so many stories like of the craziest things that, oh, I, well, I, and I, is it, is that people that like, you know, well, or no, you, they're totally oh, strangers. Can't guess me and Alex, like just from look like coming on. <laughs> oh yeah. No, total, total strangers. I, I have, yeah. One of my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I just, what's coming to mind now is like, I was, uh, I don't know. I was at, it's this cash register and, um, somewhere in America I was traveling around and the the guy he just had this like such a particular energy and I he was just ringing in my groceries in a very particular way and I just looked at him and I was like are you a Virgo and he looked back at me and he was like what are you a fucking mind reader he's like yeah I'm a Virgo and I was like okay so there's just like so you can ask my boyfriend like he's literally so used to it that I've just been like there's the weirdest things. Like I met this girl at um at a punk show recently and I was like, okay, Luna, just don't think about astrology. Just like, just meet this girl. Just like, don't try and guess someone's signs. Like, cause it's really like, it really just, it's crazy. It feels like God is talking to me and it just like comes out. It's very weird. And um, I met this girl and we were super like, you know, we're having fun and we're just chilling. And then um, she, I was like, oh, let's connect on Instagram. And she was like, oh, yeah, like uh, and she pulls it up and and she says, well, my, my Instagram is private. So you have to friend request me. And I was like, oh, you're a Scorpio. And she was a Scorpio. And I was like, Jesus, Luna, you're like guessing people's signs based off their private Instagrams. It's like it does. It can be like that. Um, but I've had way more esoteric stories too. Like, you know, I used to work in the homeless shelters, um, in Victoria, BC and wow, you know, to see the soul in like its lowest state was very interesting archetypically for me, um, to understand the different elements and like what they would behave like when they were there. And I have had like, yeah, I, I've just had crazy stories where like my intuition was like, this girl has the same birthday as you. And I'm like, nah, nah, Luna, you're just obsessed with astrology and blah, 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 like a homeless client. And then I ended up going and doing an intake with this girl. And I was like, okay, like, what's your birthday? And she's like, March 12th. And I dropped the pen and I looked up at her and I said, I knew that. And she looked back at me and she said, I knew you knew that. And I was like, ah, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> And like, you know, and then she was just like, oh, like, 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 help me. Like, what do I do? And I was like, okay, look, like, I was like, this is it. And then I was just like, whoa. <laughs> so I have had like, like endless stories like that. Um, so I have found like astrology to really like connect me with people so deeply in a way that even a cash register is like, he's like listening, you know, if I was able to, to guess it or something like that. <laughs> Is this how, you know, you say, like on your, on your, you know, in your like bio, your profile, and like on social media, you, it says you're a psychic, right? Is this how your psychic abilities always show up or are there other ways that they're showing up? I like up? this question. Um, yeah, I definitely have an, a psychic affinity to the planets. Like I, I don't know why, like I literally feel that the planets have chosen me at this point. Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like certain things choose people and the planets have chosen me and the readings that I do, like, I'm literally shocked with what comes out of my mouth sometimes. Like, I do not know 
how I was able to predict that or how I was able to say things like I just yeah. I have a really strong intuition and like working with that and strengthening it has allowed me to make like really crazy predictions and it does work um so that's definitely a thing I think it's just like intuition in general like I I do predict a lot of things um and I do have that you know astrology association with guessing things as signs and but I don't really know what to do with that information really like I've had like crises where I'm like I need to go on television or something because this is like I'm actually really good at this and and then it's like well the universe is like well it's not like a gift for you to necessarily just show off so I think that I it's just something I'm just kind of like yeah this is just a thing that happens to me and I don't I just I can twerk about it and dance and laugh but at the end of the day it's like I don't really know why I have this ability so I don't know <laughs> it's definitely a weird feeling it's something I think that we all have actually and mm -hmm, can totally. develop and can develop mine came out in dreams as a kid and then started had started developing it with Reiki but I it's hard to trust I'm still like we're in the validation stage of trusting your intuition and then when you actually have the you know say it out loud ask for permission to say it with a client or um have a validating experience I think the more of them you have um the stronger that gets but do you have any I guess techniques or rituals or other encouragement to offer those who have um you know experienced that and want to develop it and don't know how to build or reinforce their intuition totally well the thing with intuition is it's the art of listening. So if your mind is so busy with what am I going to eat for lunch? Oh, shit, I should have done that. Oh, I need to call Joe or, you know, it's like if your mind is busy with the day to day worries or stresses or anxiety, it's like intuition is just not going to come in. Like there's not going to be space because you're not going to listen to it and you're not going to trust it. And the thing with intuition is that it's very soft and subtle and it's like this whisper that comes in and then there'll be like other voices that come in after that. And the practice is learning how to hear the first intuitive message. And the thing is, is most people, I guess they they mistaken like fear with intuition. Um, and so most people actually behave instinctively rather than intuitively. So how am I going to be OK if I don't have food shelter, you know, outcasted by society? <laughs> Um, so it can be really hard to live intuitively versus in, um, instinctively. And I think the practice is actually training to live intuitively, like it's a lifestyle. Um, so I, yeah, I would recommend like, I know everybody's like, oh, it's such an annoying practice and blah, blah, blah. But like meditating is really important to like calm the mind or just being in a state of presence, you know, like you can go for a walk and just like making sure you look at the flowers and you're, you're open, you're an open channel, like you're 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 clear you know you're not just like oh like uh, uh, I don't know what to do where should I go oh I forgot to do this it's like you're actually just being and when you're just being is like when you receive the messages and then when you receive those messages you have practice to follow them and to trust them but it's gonna it's it's actually like anything it's gonna feel uncomfortable or weird at first but then as it gets familiar um you can and obviously like I recommend, you know, doing rituals and things on the full moon and, you know, tracking your astrology stuff and you can fucking put essential oils on your third eye and whatever, you know, but ultimately I think it's about like deciding that you're going to be intuitive and like living that lifestyle and it's very, very different than living from a space of fear um, and that intuition is the basis and then from there, you can go higher into like fortune telling and predictions and stuff like that. But there needs to be a basis of intuition to start with. Does that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I think like anyone who has meditated or done, you know, sound baths or I mean, shit, even like a really hot yoga class where it like really <laughs> just eliminates your mind it's so that those were like my early experiences were getting hits of intuition and so, like signs or voices where I'd be lying there on the mat like completely beat up but so tired that my brain just was done for a moment and there were no more thoughts and then all of a sudden like an idea pops up and it's like oh my god that's the thing 
right? Or I go in that direction, right? It's not always so clear, but sometimes it's just an arrow in a direction. And yeah, I think it's important that people hear like there's so many ways to get to this, right? You don't have to do it in one specific way to your, I love that you said, like oh, it could maybe. just be taking a walk. It could be sitting on the water. It could be some people get really clear doing an activity, but an activity that is, you're not in the doing of it. You're more in the being of it. Um, that was great. What do you, who are the best people to like reach out to you and why would they? What are they going to get? Um, well, <laughs> it's funny because people reach out to me for literally everything. Um, and so I think like I might have that that vibe. And I, as much as I try to narrow in, it's like it still seems to be the broad. Um, people come to me for, like I said, everything, um, whether it's understanding their sole purpose and what they're here to do, to wanting to grow a business, to start a business, to sustain the business, to grow their business and make more money, to healing um, relationships and love and in partnership. I'm also in a um, five year soulmate relationships so people um they're very curious about their love life and stuff like that and i i coach and i work with people one on one and you know i have group programs and stuff but a birth chart can help with all of that and um i do use astrology in all of my coaching and all of my spaces so who's ever interested in astrology who's ever interested in learning to know more about themselves who ever wants like a road map to the highest expression of their life then um, yeah, that's what I'm here for. For anybody who's like spiritually curious or just wanting to go deeper in their in their birth chart and into magic, and yeah, that's that's kind of it. <laughs> I just uh, I just privately I'm <laughs> I'm like outing our private dialogue. I'm like Kareem. Can, can oh, we... I'm sorry, I wasn't even paying attention. I was listening. I didn't think you were, <laughs> so I'm just outing myself. I'm like Kareem. Can we make her tell us something about ourselves? <laughs> can we put her on the spot like this it might have worked like that <laughs> well I'm, at, I'm like even i mean you know i've been in situations where we, we've actually done this on the show right where like we a few were times. going through some things and the person that we were talking to is like i can share something with you now i don't want to throw you under the bus and like put you on the spot if that's like not how no no you real. totally like you told i eat and breathe this stuff yeah so but, um, if there was like a message or like however you deliver it like for each of us that you could tap into um, it's just like the problem is, is um, like people like when they when when they hear about themselves, right? But sure. there is like twelve, like there's twelve, um, you know, placements that you know I'd have to include that otherwise would be missed. So I can read for you personally, like I could tell you about your rising sign or something simple, you know. Um, well, what but about like otherwise, the you? You were talking about the planet then before, right? Like the like the kind of the state of the like the planet or what's going on here. Is there something you you can share with us that like is kind of resonant or relative to like everyone on this planet? Yeah, I mean, I think the most basic way to start like tracking your your energy and understanding like what you're supposed to be doing. You know, I do quotation marks, but like what you're supposed to be doing um, in life at any moment even beyond looking at the moon placements, because sometimes like people want to track the moon, but they're like, oh my God, it's a full moon and I forgot, or I don't know how to track the, the moon cycles or whatever. The most basic thing that you can do is be in touch with the seasons because the seasons, no matter where you live, the seasons is a reflective of the sun sign of what sun, um, what sun placement we're in. So for example, right now, the sun just recently moved into cancer. So it's going to be summertime soon, right? We just, we entered summer, um, summertime <laughs> and it's going to be like themes that are going to be Cancerian. So what that means is that everybody on the planet right now has a sun in cancer. So if you have sun in cancer for this month, what you're supposed to be doing is Cancerian themes. So it would be, you know, this is how you can learn about the archetypes this way is, you know, maybe you're doing house cleaning or you're finding a new home to live in or your healing relationship with your mother or, you know, whatever. These are cancer themes. Um, and so that's that's the energy of the month. Right. And as you know, the year continues, we're going to go into Leo season, which is the height of summer. And Leo represents the sun, joy, play, pleasure, being out and about, 
like doing your creative hobbies. So, you know, making sure you're in alignment that way, right? In the wintertime, Capricorn, right? We should be settling down a bit. Like, you know, we're in the dead of winter. How are we planning for, you know, the year ahead, right? All of this is supposedly like in alignment. So, you know, Aries representing spring, newness, blah, blah, blah. So that's what I would suggest for people if they want to be more in touch with the planets, with the with the elements, with the seasons, is what astrology is really going down that path of just like looking at the sun and like, okay, what 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 season are we in, um, and how can I relate my life to the season? Does that help? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think it gives people a like a place to go without you know. Yeah, I think you know. I think I I agree, and I think that it gives people a starting place, right? Like a place to start looking at how to organize their life in relationship to the world around us. Yeah. Alex, if you want your chart read too, you know, you can always reach out to me. <laughs> and I've, uh, like I've, had, chart. I've had my chart read actually twice on podcasts, like live oh. where I didn't know where I didn't know what was going to, what they were going to tell me. And we recorded it live unedited. Um, and it's actually really cool that way because then I go back and I can listen to an episode and one of them was she talked about like the next three to five years of my life. Mm -hmm. And so I can go back now that time has passed and I can actually go back and see some of the things are really clear. Like she was she was really spot on. And she's a very talented, talented at what she does and has and has, you know, built an incredible career for herself. And then some of the things. I don't know that they they were wrong or didn't exist or just that I didn't see them, right? Like, I think there's mm -hmm. a perspective what we change and evolve too, right? So if she may have said, hey, this part of your life is going to be really hard for you. Maybe knowing that that was coming, I yeah. shifted and adapted. And by the time I yeah. got there, it wasn't as hard as it would have been had I not shifted and adapted. Well, that's what astrology does, right? is like, this is such a huge conversation that we'd have to have a whole episode on, but on like fate and destiny. And even the mere fact that you had a reading could actually change the outcome of the mm -hmm. event. So that's where I make myself crazy with astrology, you know? And I'm like, am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be predicting it? And I actually wanted to ask you about that earlier because you were also talking about how sometimes almost a reading can be a bad thing. Like it can be judgmental or... You know, there are certain tones or languages that can be used in astrology that, mm -hmm. you know, are not, maybe not, not really, yeah, yeah, that's the word, that's the word, um, but that it can also maybe change fate. And I know I've had a lot of people ask me about that, especially skeptics. You know, I grew up in a really Christian religious family and would openly talk about this stuff and uh, people are really skeptical about that. So how do you, I guess, prevent that from happening or... Are there any rules around how you should use it? Because tarot is kind of the same thing. Sure. Um, to be honest, like, well, first of all, if you're working with an astrologer or you're, you know, doing that, then definitely just hiring an astrologer you resonate with. That's just the first thing. Um, you know, like I work with astrologers who don't make me feel that way. Um, you know, they make me feel confident and empowered and excited and not just like, oh, shit, I can't believe this is coming. You know, I think that that's not the vibe. Um, but if you're looking at astrology yourself and tracking your own transits, to be honest, I haven't really <laughs> figured out like a super healthy way to make sure that I'm super balanced. I am a Pisces and Pisces Virgo is the axis of anxiety. So I can look to certain transits in my chart and be like, oh, my God, like what is going to happen? Like, am I going to die or something, you know? And then the transit will happen and I'll be like, oh, everything's fine. So like sometimes it'll be like, I'll just like have this new rebirth or I'll have an amazing experience or you can't really, really predict the exact events. Like I said, there's the dartboard. So if, you know, you look at things with a, a scary point of view, I don't know, like, you know, there needs to be work done and I need to do my own work. But at the end of the day, like the tarot, when you when you pull a card and when you pull scarier quote-unquote cards it really depends how scared you are of life because how much do you trust your life how much do you trust that everything is perfect and exactly the way it's supposed to be and if you're looking for an answer for something in your life you might get it right if you're like hey universe what's gonna happen and then the universe tells you and then it actually happens 
You know, is that something scary or is that beautiful? Is that perfect? Is that exactly the way things are supposed to be? Because a lot of times we try to hold on, we try to control, we try to manipulate. We don't want that thing to happen, but we actually don't really know what's happening. And that's why I love astrology, because it just confirms that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing out of place, even like the bad parts, um, quote unquote, or the more challenging parts is like, it's just part of life. Like there's just you just as there's beautiful and amazing people out there. There's also scary rapists and murderers out there. And I think that, you know, to disregard that is is not helpful either. Um, I think like some of the most challenging parts of the chart, you know, even looking to Chiron, your greatest wounds, like when I tell people their greatest wounds of what they've been struggling with their whole life, a lot of people are like, holy shit, thank you, you know, because it's the most validating thing in the world to hear that your challenges that you've experienced are totally normal for you. Um, and to have a stranger tell you that is very validating. So that's what I would say to that question. <laughs> I love that. I, and then, you know, I think the piece that like you, you touched on a little is that you still get to decide who you are, or who you're going to be in the face of totally. whatever you're told. Right. So I often think that the worst things that happen to us are the doorway to the best things that are going to happen. Now, I believe that because I choose to see it that way. So then I'm looking for the, after a bad thing happens, I'm like eyes open and peeled. Where's the great thing, but somebody else who's told, hey, a bad thing is going to happen might sink into like, oh, great. Now it's going to be a mess. And so that that possibility that might come by is missed or they're looking for the next bad thing, which we can always find. And so I love this as regardless of whatever you're told or whatever is shared with you, you get to decide the lens in which you look at it through and who you want to be with the the positive, the negative, or even if you want to view it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you or anyone else like I've never heard at least of anyone that I would feel like I trust giving you such specifics that you don't, that you lose your free will. Like you have to do this or you have to do this. Um, and I think we, you would agree. You're not like telling people what they have to do. You're, what I hear you saying is like, Hey, I'm more giving you like high levels of kind of perspective or insight into your life and your journey. And then they get to decide what they do with those breadcrumbs. Totally. Totally. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. Um, and you can see, you can see everything in the chart too, right? So you can see, like, I can see people's, quote unquote, their minds and how they um, receive information by looking at Mercury. And so there is certain things that I will say to a person and not say to another person, Sure. right? right. If I see that someone someone's mind is a little bit slower or someone's mind is a little bit like prideful or secretive or, you know, sensitive, then it's like, I'm not going to go for the jugular vein of the chart, right? I'm going to make them feel like it, I'm going to make them feel good, right? So I think it's like important to be discerning of everything. Um, it's super, super esoteric and complicated and also not at all at the same time. Like, I know it sounds like I'm throwing out all this stuff, but it, really this this knowledge I believe is available and accessible for everybody and it's just like just getting started and experiencing astrology is the most fucking healing thing in the world because I don't understand how it works either like it's like okay well the planet is this and this it's like yeah but what does that really mean like what what is anything what is yeah. how does science work how does this how does a phone work like we don't I don't know I don't matter. know, yeah. but there's, it doesn't matter. And that's what people are so obsessed with. They're just like, well, how, well, why? And it's like, well, what if you just saw that it worked? What would that do? How would that transform your life? And I have, I have, I'm into a variety of different hobbies and things. And astrology is the thing that I'm continuously obsessed with, which is because it just continuously is so obvious once you've like opened the veil to it. Um, you can't turn your eyes off from it. <laughs> once you have op opened them, it's like absolutely been insane. I'm looking forward to studying it more and maybe continuing to learn from you at some point. Is that, yeah. wow. My mind is yeah, I wanna... to open to, to, uh, to more today. So thank you for all of that. All the ancient- Yeah, I'm actually planning on doing like 
an astrology course or like learning how to read charts and stuff like that. But I'm like, this is going to be my fucking legacy. So it's going to take like a long, a long time um, because I want it to be, you know, top quality <laughs> for you but, to yeah, not just um, because you're a uh, scorpio <laughs> your scorpio energy and you want to keep everybody in the mystery for a while first <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just gotta be following me you gotta sign up for my newsletter you know. for it <laughs> yeah I'm just you, but. Per, that was like a perfect lead-in how do people follow you sign up for your newsletter like work with you what are the best ways to connect with you yeah, the best way is on Instagram. I'm very active on there and I will respond to your messages. You could just be like, hey, love the podcast. I also just love connecting with people. I'm on luna.veronica.mystic. Uh, be careful. There are some scam accounts of me. Um, so just making sure I have highlights and I have around 15,000 followers. So just making sure that that's actually me. Um, and yeah, I have a podcast called Words Are Spells and people love it. It's very a uh, controversial, very mystical, taboo podcast. And uh, yeah, I have a membership that has like witchcraft women in there. We're doing astrology stuff and we're doing magic in there. Um, like you can work one-on-one -on -one with me. You can book a reading with me. Um, but the best way, my website is is being constructed, uh, reconstructed now. So I think the best way um, to get a hold of me is through Instagram and um, you can see all my all my links are there. And yeah, I just love to connect with you guys. And it's really important to create community uh, for me. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Thanks, Luna. Thank you for, you know, you gave us a lot of your time. Thank you. And um, we're just super. This was a great, this was probably more than either one of us expected. Um, and to everyone listening, thank you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Frequency Shifters. We really hope that you got some value, you learned something, and that there's something from this episode that you can take away and use in your life. Who are you thinking of right now that needs to hear this episode? Please share it with them. Share this on social media, subscribe and like and leave a comment. And please, if you have a comment or an idea or something that you want us to talk about or investigate, leave it online and we will go into those and bring you that information. Please like, share and subscribe and we will see you next time.